So um, I thought we would start off by introducing everybody. Um, well, have everybody talk about who they are and how they resist through their particular <clears throat> medium. So we're going to start with Sasha Valour, right? Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Can you hear me OK? Um, OK, so I think a lot about um, the history of drag and what role drag queens and kings have been able to have within the LGBTQ community, especially, and allow that to inform my idea of resistance through drag. And I really think it's as, I mean, not to diminish the beauty, glamour, fashion side of drag, because I love that too, but so much of what drag has always been is as a kind of host for the LGBTQ community, bringing people together, keeping them entertained, and then s creating spaces where um, intersectional discussions can actually happen and political discussions can happen. So I think one of the most important things that I do is as an editor and a producer, not just as a drag queen. Um, so in my show, my monthly show in Brooklyn, I try to really bring in a lot of interesting voices together. For me, the future of drag is really all about like lots and lots of different types of artists interacting with each other, communicating, talking about what values are, redefining beauty together, butting heads at times, because I think that those kinds of conversations tap into the sorts of pain that people are experiencing, the sorts of goals that people have. And it's amazing how actually like focused and targeted discussions within drag shows can be. I've had, after my shows, I've had like, political roundtables <laughs> in, in meet and greet lines, political roundtables, just hugging people, talking about not just, not, and not just political issues, but the personal as well, because they obviously, when it comes to our community and the ones that we intersect with, those are completely fluid. So, I, so summing it all, all up, <laughs> because there are so many facets to what I think drag is all about, it's, we, we need to be organizers. Um, and, and leaders and help to craft spaces to have the discussion, not necessarily to be the only voice speaking. Okay. All right. Now we go to Phoebe Robinson, comic, writer, actress, and podcaster. Oh, thank you. Is this okay? Can you guys hear me? Is this better? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll <laughs> lean down. I just want to be cute for pictures, and I can't. Yeah. I'll do that. Great. Uh, yeah, so I'm Phoebe Robinson. Um, if you don't know, I am the co-host of Two Dope Queens podcast for WNYC. <laughs> and I also have a solo podcast, interview podcast called So Many White Guys. Because, um, yes. you know, there are a lot of them. And uh, <laughs> I've been doing comedy for almost a decade. I started in New York, and uh, I still live there. And, you know, we do a lot of comedy, whether it's sketch, stand-up, or improv. It's mostly like a straight white guy perspective. And I, especially in the beginning, when I would do shows, like, I would often be the only woman on or the only person of color on. Like, people, like, I actually heard, like, Booker say, like, oh, we don't want to have more than, like, one black person on the show because then people are going to think it's, like, a special, like, black show. And mm -hmm. it's just, like, a weird, like... There's a way of like trying to just make us feel like the other, like we don't belong on these shows, or like we're just like a, a niche, like novelty performer, as opposed to like I am a stand up comedian, just like Jerry Seinfeld is. Um, and so I think with Two Dope Queens, in particular, Jessica Williams, my co host, and I, we really were like, we want to highlight women people of color and people from the queer community. Like, we'll have, like, you know, white guys on, but, like, really our focus is to have amazing, brilliant voices that don't get the attention, that don't get booked on late-night shows because they are not, they don't look a certain way. And so I think with a lot of the comedy that I do, I just want to kind of represent that voice. And also, like, I don't need to speak for everyone. I can absolutely just put a microphone in someone else's face and be like, you tell your story. Yes. Because I think a lot of times people are like, well, I have to speak for everyone. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you just have to provide the outlet for other people to speak. So that's what I try to do with my comedy. All right. Visual recording and performance artist, A.B. Soto. <laughs> So my name is Avi Soto, right? Um, I am a, <laughs> a visual performance artist. I like to take um, traditional stereotypes and rebelliously deconstruct them in a way um, 
that the audience can see in a new way. And um, there's a lot of dance, uh, I studied fashion. For me, um, I think visibility is the key word. Um, growing up in East LA, I didn't really have you know, male role models in, in, in the media, in Hollywood that I could look up to. I would always look up to like, you know, female pop stars and divas and kind of like try to emulate them. Um, but for me, it's, it's, I want to inspire the new generation of, of kids, you know, little gay boys uh, to, to see themselves represented in the medium, in, 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 in the, whether it's TV, whether it's music, whether it's just walking down the street, I think visibility is key, and I try to do that with my music and, and a cute outfit and a fierce <laughs> choreo. <laughs> uh, there's lots of humor in it. Um, I think that is, um, without sounding too preachy, I like to have fun and just inspire people to have a good time. Right now we have YouTuber, journalist, and Logos political correspondent Raymond Braun here. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so excited to be here at DragCon. And for me, I really pursue the art of resistance through storytelling. We've talked about the importance of visibility and of using whatever privilege or space you have to try to uplift as many other diverse and underrepresented voices as you can. And that's something that I've always really tried to do, particularly with my political coverage with Logo. I was their election correspondent last year, looking at how LGBTQ issues intersected with the broader political dialogue. And I also do a lot of consulting and advocacy work with some of our leading LGBTQ organizations organizations like GLAAD, the Trevor Project, GLSEN, Human Rights Campaign, thinking about how they can use their platforms to encourage a dialogue to get people educated and to hopefully change people's hearts and minds. I think that so many of us who have gone through the experience of coming out know what it's like to have someone who maybe before you came out didn't support the LGBTQ community, didn't know anyone from the LGBTQ community. But through the act of coming out and sharing your story with them and being your authentic self, through those conversations and through your existence, you're able to ultimately change their hearts and minds. And so I think if we can do that, not only on a one-on-one -on -one level by encouraging people to feel empowered to share their stories and transform their communities, but also on a mass media level through television, through journalism, through sh amazing shows like Drag Race, then we're also able to create this cultural change on a larger scale. For me personally, what I most like to do when, you, when I think about art and resistance is to go into communities that might be hostile towards LGBTQ folks and to try to enforce a dialogue, to have people confront stereotypes and to question and challenge their assumptions. And one of the proudest things that I did last year with Logo was we covered the Republican National Convention. And I walked around that convention for a week covered in a massive rainbow flag, eight hours a day on the floor of the convention. And people had, to, people had to confront it, and people had a visceral reaction to seeing me. I mean, there were some people that literally would just lift up their shirt and show me their gun when I walked by, but there were also people who would come up with tears in their eyes and say, I have a gay son. I've been trying to figure out and reconcile my identity as a Republican with the fact that I have this child. And, and we were really encouraging conversations. Before I started doing uh, political ad advocacy and journalism work, I worked for Google for almost four years. And similarly, we were always trying to think about how can we use this brand that millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people see every day to enforce a conversation. And I think the proudest thing that I did there was we worked to change the Google logo to a rainbow the day that the Sochi Olympics started. And that happened all around the world, including in Russia. And so people had to look at that logo and think about what's the message behind here. We didn't prompt it too much, but we just put that symbol out there and had people discuss. And so anywhere that I can kind of go in and, and create a conversation and get people questioning assumptions is what I like to do. Thank you.